Hi, welcome to the colored pencil demo. Today we're going to look at technique practice and realism. This demo was created to go along with our photorealistic still life unit in colored pencil. The link to this unit can be found in the description below. To follow along with this demo, please print this worksheet, which can be found in our unit and in the link down below in the description, or pause this video and recreate these four boxes and two circles on a piece of paper. Today we will practice four value strips that represent four different colored pencil techniques and will create a realistic sphere and a realistic peppermint candy. You will need a pencil, eraser, sharpener, gel pen, markers, and colored pencils. Let's get started by practicing some colored pencil technique. And before we actually start on the worksheet, I just want to briefly go over the technique that we'll be using today. In order to show value transitions, what we're going to do is we're actually going to choose one color and find three pencils that represent that one color, a dark, a medium, and a light. With your darkest color, this is how you will color. You'll apply heavy pressure and then ease off in the pressure, creating a nice, smooth transition of value from dark to light. Then you'll pick up your medium color. With your medium color, you'll apply heavy pressure over the dark color into the middle section and then ease up on the pressure until it fades off. Exact same thing we just did with the dark color. Then with your lightest color, you're going to apply heavy pressure over everything. By applying heavy pressure, you are blending together all three colors so it has a nice seamless color blend. The other important aspect of this is that you make the color opaque and it's no longer transparent. Let me show you an example of what not to do. What we don't want to do is we don't want to apply heavy pressure only and then just stop. By doing this, what you end up doing is creating stripes of color. Here you can see that the colors do not blend in the second example. Don't do that. Instead, what you're going to do, again, is apply heavy pressure and then ease up on the pressure. And then get your next color, heavy pressure, over the dark color, ease up on the pressure. And then the lightest color, whatever your last color will be, you will apply heavy pressure over everything. Here I'm doing a fourth color. The fourth color is going to do heavy pressure over everything because that's my last color. You can even introduce white as your final color if you would like. The important thing is that you transition your colors so there's room for them to blend together. So now let's apply this technique to our worksheet. Choose any one color and then find a dark version, a medium version, and a light version of that one color. Here you can see I chose red as my main color. I have a Tuscan red, a crimson red, an orange, and a yellowed orange. Once you have your colors, you're ready to begin. We're going to start with the first box. This will be technique practice number one. And here, what we're gonna do is we're going to learn how to layer value using the lightest color to the darkest color. So pick up your lightest color, and with the lightest color, I'd like you to apply light to medium pressure, filling in the entire box. As you color, try to make sure that your coloring is nice and smooth. The best way to do this is by coloring one direction and then the opposite direction on top of that and also by using small tight circles to fill in the space evenly. Next you're going to grab your medium color. My medium color is crimson red and with your medium value you're going to apply medium pressure on the left side that will be our dark side and as you move away from the left side you should ease up on the pressure and allow it to kind of slowly fade out i like to start out one direction and then i turn my page and i go the opposite direction on top of that and i make sure that i fill up the entire space and i apply the right amount of pressure as i move around the box Remember, it's important that it goes dark and then it fades off as you work.
Okay, now I'm ready for my darkest value, which is a Tuscan red. I'm gonna start on that left side again where the dark side is. I'm gonna apply heavy pressure this time. And as I move away from the left side, I'm going to ease up on that pressure, allow it to slowly transition to a medium pressure, into a light pressure, until it eventually fades off. I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna work in the opposite direction, and I'm going to make sure I apply the right amount of pressure in the right parts of the box, using small tight circles to make sure that my value is nice and smooth and that it transitions from dark to light. You really want to make sure that that transition from dark to light is nice and smooth. Okay, one thing that you've probably noticed as you're finishing up is that you can still see white paper. It's not very opaque. So the solution to this is to use a colorless blender. It's almost like a blending stump for colored pencil. Prisma makes them and they work great with the Prisma colored pencils. What you do is you use this colorless blender to blend together the color you've already put down. It kind of smears the color around the page, ensuring that that white paper is no longer showing through. You don't see that white texture um, and you can create a really smooth surface using this really cool tool. Use the blender like you would a colored pencil by using small tight circles to make sure that you can't see line direction and you make the surface nice and smooth. Now if you don't have a colorless blender that is totally okay. Take your lightest color again and use the lightest color to go over the entire box with heavy pressure. Your lightest color will do the work that the colorless blender is doing. The only difference is that the colorless blender isn't laying down color. Your light color will lay down color, but both of them will make your work opaque and no longer transparent. Okay, now we're gonna practice my favorite technique, fading value from dark to light. My students have the most success with this method and I tend to lean towards this method in my own personal work as well. So this technique is the exact same method I shared with you at the beginning before we started the worksheet. Here, you're gonna take your darkest color and you're going to apply heavy pressure on the dark side and slowly as you move away from the dark side, you're gonna ease up on the pressure and allow it to fade out. Then turn your paper and you're going to continue to fill in the spaces that you missed before, coloring in the opposite direction, which allows your value to smooth out and color in small tight circles, filling up all of the space and applying the correct amount of pressure as you move down the value strip. The most important part of creating value with colored pencil is leaving room for the next color to come in and blend together with the color you just laid down. So by creating a value transition with the one color from dark to light as you see here, it allows the next color 
to easily get placed on top of this color and then create the same effect with the next. Okay, I finished my darkest value. Now I'm on to my medium value, which for me is a crimson red. I'm going to apply with my medium value, hard pressure in a circular motion, starting on the left side, right over my darkest color, blending the two of those colors together. This medium color starts to fill in any of those gaps where you might see white paper showing through. And then as I move away from the left side, again, I'm going to ease up on the pressure and let that medium color fade off, making room, leaving room for my next and final color to fill in the rest of the space in a nice, smooth, easy transition of value. Again, use small tight circles and the right amount of pressure as you move down the value strip. Okay, I'm gonna get my last and final color, which is going to be orange in this case for me. That'll be my lighter value. And with the lightest value, I'm going to apply heavy pressure over everything, blending all three colors together. Okay, so we have successfully completed two different techniques with colored pencil. Now let's try two additional ways to show value with this medium. First, we're going to start with technique number three. And in this technique, we're going to use a marker base. So I'm using mostly reds as my main hue but I do have orange as my lighter value. So I chose a marker on that end and I chose to work with a light orange for my marker color. With your marker, I'd like you to fill in the entire box. Now sometimes, depending on the marker you use, it takes a little while for the marker to fully dry. So while that's drying, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to the next technique, technique number four, and we're going to practice using a complementary color as the dark value underneath our color. So since my colors are red, I chose green as my complementary color because green is on the opposite side from red on the color wheel. With my green, I'm going to use it to act as the dark value. I'm going to apply the green on the dark side of my value strip, the exact same way I would with a normal red colored pencil. Heavy pressure fading into light pressure. 
If you're using blue as your color, you're going to want to use orange as the complementary. If you're using violet as your main color, you're going to want to use yellow as your complementary and vice versa. Okay, once you feel good about the value transition of your complementary color, you can go ahead and grab your main color again. So these are the three colors I've been using. Dark red, medium red, and then orange is my light version. So I can choose to use the dark and the medium color or the medium and the light color. In this case, I chose to use the dark color, my Tuscan red, and my crimson red as my light color. Take your color and I want you to color with heavy pressure right over its complement. Once again, you're trying to show a transition of color with this one color. So dark, heavy pressure on the left side, ease up on the pressure as it moves away from the dark side. Okay, so now I'm taking my crimson red and I'm going to apply heavy pressure over the green section, over the Tuscan red section, and then I'm going to ease up on the pressure as I move on to the right hand side because I'm going to actually introduce a fourth color, the orange, as my lightest color. Orange will be my lightest color in this case, so I will apply heavy pressure over everything, blending everything together so it looks seamless. Using a color's complement to show the shade or dark value is the most realistic way of using the colored pencils. Okay, let's head back over to technique number three because our marker should be dry by now. Now that we have a marker base, you can choose any of the other three methods that we have already practiced and apply it over the marker. My favorite method is to go dark to light, so that's what I'll be doing here in this demo. The advantage of putting marker down first is that it allows you to already have a base color and you don't have to worry so much about filling in the entire space. There's no white paper showing through because it's already filled in with a marker base. The marker color that you choose does have an overall effect on the colored pencils. The colored pencils might not be as bright and it might alter the course that they would have naturally taken on white paper. This, of course, can be good or bad. So choose your marker colors wisely. Okay, now that we have finished some colored pencil techniques, we're going to apply our learning and create a valued sphere. Before we get started, it's important that we understand a little bit of light logic. Every object has a light source. When that light source hits an object, there are certain things that always occur. First is the highlight where the light source directly hits the object. Then you have the midtones that lead you to the core shadow. The core shadow is the darkest part on the object where the object has turned away from the light. The core shadow then fades into the reflective light where it gets light again because the light source hits the surface of the table and bounces back up onto the object. And then of course the last thing you have is the cast shadow, the shadow that's cast from the object down onto the surface it's sitting on. We will apply this logic to a circle and turn this circle into a three-dimensional realistically shaded sphere. Before we start, it's always a good idea to kind of map out a plan. 
Here I drew a circle with my light value for the highlight and I did a C shape for the core shadow. The core shadow wraps around the object and contours to the edge of it. So if our sphere is rounded, then our core shadow needs to curve with the roundness of that object. The core shadow is the darkest part of the image, but as it heads towards the bottom, it turns into reflective light, where the light source hits the surface of the table and bounces back up. So as I'm working with value and I'm fading that core shadow dark value down towards the bottom, I want to ease up on the pressure, leaving room for the reflective light. As I move up towards the highlight, I'm going to add in all of the midtones. The midtones are all of the value transitions from the darkest value, the core shadow, to the lightest value, the highlight. It should be a nice smooth transition. So apply what we practice with the value strip and create a nice smooth transition of value using small tight circles and coloring in opposite directions. Now I'm going to add the cast shadow. The cast shadow is darkest underneath the object. So I'm going to use my dark value with heavy pressure right underneath the object. And then as it moves away from the object, it appears to get lighter. So I'm going to ease up on the pressure as that cast shadow moves away from the object. Here you can see I did a nice job of filling in all of the value transitions just using one color. But we're not done yet. Grab your medium value and with your medium value, go over all of the areas you've already applied that dark value. In some areas you want to apply heavy pressure like the cast shadow. I'm going to use my medium value to fill in the entire rest of the cast shadow. I'll use my medium value to go over the core shadow and to start to create a nice smooth transition of the midtones as it heads over to the highlight. Make sure you ease up on the pressure of the medium value, leaving room for your next color to come in and blend with it. Okay, now I'm using my third color, which is orange. I'm applying orange to all of the areas I've already laid down and then I'm going to use it lightly in the area that's heading towards that highlight. I don't want to go too dark too fast in that highlighted area. I'm actually going to use a fourth color around the orange and I'm going to use white on the highlight itself. So here's my fourth color. It's a yellowed orange. I'll lightly apply color right where the highlight is, leaving a little bit of space and filling the rest in with white. With your white, you don't want to go too far into the rest of the color because it leaves a milkiness behind. So only stay in the highlighted area. It's always a good idea to go back and refine any areas you need to. So I'm using my colorless blender to clean up the edge and make sure it's nice and smooth and opaque without any white paper showing through. Okay, congratulations, you just finished the sphere. Now let's apply our colored pencil technique mastery to a peppermint candy. In the space below the circle at the very bottom of the worksheet, you'll see a lightly drawn circle. If it's too light, you can go ahead and add another line around that, but don't draw too dark. Next, I want you to find the center of the circle, make a dot. From the center, go straight up and make a dot on the outer edge of the circle. Go straight down and add a dot underneath that. Go back to the center and then go to the left and make a dot on the outer edge and a dot on the outer edge on the right side. Now you have five dots. In between the dots you've already created, add another dot. All together you should have nine dots. Now to create the peppermint candy pattern, you're going to go from the center dot to the outer dots by creating a nice curved line. Make sure that the line is the exact same, that it's uniform all the way around the peppermint candy 
from the center to each of the eight dots on the outside. Now is a good time to fix any mistakes and ensure that each of the pies are evenly spaced. I like to plan out the value. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to create a circle in the center where the dark value will start and end. Then I'm gonna create a larger circle in between the outer edge and the circle I just drew. This will represent the shadow that's kind of creeping up on the sides of the peppermint candy. You will treat that middle section as the highlight on the peppermint candy. I'm going to start with the colored section first. So I'm going to choose my darkest color, which will be a Tuscan red. And before I lay down color, I'm going to first erase the graphite lines. You always want to erase the graphite lines because graphite lines don't mix well with colored pencil. Okay, so with my darkest pencil, my Tuscan Red, I'm going to apply heavy pressure on the outer edge, and then as I move in towards the center, I'll ease up on that pressure, just like we've been practicing this entire demo. I'll do the same thing on the inside of the peppermint candy, right in the center, it'll be darker, and then as it moves in towards that highlighted area, it'll get lighter. Okay, now I'm going to take my medium color, my crimson red. I'm going to apply heavy pressure right over my Tuscan red, right over my dark value. Ease up on the pressure as I creep into this middle section right here. I'll do heavy pressure right in the center again. Ease up on the pressure as I creep into that middle highlighted section again. Nice and smooth, small tight circles. Make sure it's a nice smooth transition of dark to light to dark again. Make sure that your value transitions are also curving and contouring to the shape of the peppermint candy. Next, I'm taking my third color, my lightest color. I'm going to apply heavy pressure over everything, blending it all together and making it opaque. Okay, now I'm gonna do the white stripe of the peppermint candy, but you aren't gonna leave it solid white because you're still gonna see value. So I'm gonna use black, gray, and white for the shadow in the white stripe of the peppermint candy. Once again, I'm going to erase as I go. So I'll erase the section I'm about to color in. And I'm gonna start with black. Now whenever you use black, you wanna be very careful. Start light. Don't go dark with black. I'm just going to lightly apply the black Prisma pencil in this shaded area on the outside of the peppermint candy and a little bit on the inside of the peppermint candy as well. I'm then going to use the gray to go over the black and then fade out as it gets into the highlighted area. I'll use it on the outside and the middle area as we have practiced making sure to let the gray fade out into nothingness. When you have a nice smooth transition, take the white, fill in that white section, don't leave it paper white, make it pencil white, and then bring the white down into the gray and down into the black, blending it all together. Just be careful that the white doesn't touch the red because the white will pick up the red and smear it into the white section. So be careful as you move around that section. Go back over the areas and refine as needed.
Then just continue to work your way around the entire peppermint candy, making sure that you skip stripes so that you leave room for the white spaces and the colored spaces. Make sure that you erase as you move around. Make sure that you show nice value transitions that are smooth, moving from dark to light. And make sure that the highlight is curved and contours to the edge of the peppermint candy. As a final optional step, you can use a gel pen, a white gel pen, to create a nice shine or highlight around the peppermint candy, giving a nice detail. Just don't overdo it. A little bit goes a long way. Just a few curved lines, a few little dots is all you need. And you did it! You completed a beautiful worksheet practicing a variety of colored pencil techniques. Well done!